We're ready to roll. Just, just give us your name and a little bit about the, the history of the house, please. Sure, my name is Keith McClough. I'm the site manager here at Klein Creek Farm. Uh, we're standing in front of the Klein Farmhouse. This is the second or third structure that they built here on the property. They came here in 1835, uh, built a log cabin in the woods along the DuPage River. And the story goes they moved it uh, within a few years here to Klein Creek. Uh, and that log cabin stayed and uh, improved until the late 1880s when they built this farmhouse here. That was also the time when Frank Klein took over from his father, Casper Klein. So, this house was constructed when? Uh, we don't have an exact date. Uh, we know it was the late 1880s. Uh, there is a um, from fancy woodwork in the peak saying 1889, but we know that date wasn't the date that they actually finished the house. As we know, the uh, birth and death dates for the family, and there's pictures of this house uh, while Casper was still living. So uh, they must have added that date uh, later in the 1920s when they added the bay window. And they just didn't have the date, or, or how they picked the date, we don't know. Can you kind of describe the layout of the farm as it exists today, reconstructed for today? Sure, we have the uh, 199.6 acres that the Kleins farmed. Uh, we raise crops and livestock. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the family area here in the dooryard of the house with a dooryard garden uh, and orchard. So anything that the family would have done, uh, we try to do throughout the year. I should say that we don't interpret the Klein family directly uh, because there were many farms just like this all over DuPage County. We've uh, tried to uh, recreate a typical DuPage County farm. And the, the farm is reconstructed consists of the house, and what are some of the other buildings you see around here? The original buildings are this house, of course. Uh, we also have a smokehouse, which is part of the old log cabin complex. And then the barn, those are the original structures. Uh, the other buildings have been built to fill in the site, uh, including the timber frame wagon shed, uh, many of the livestock sheds, we have a chicken coop, ice house, sawdust bin, um, an outhouse. And what's the structure right behind you attached, separate oh, from the main house? Uh, part of the house, we have the summer kitchen. Uh, very typical to have a summer kitchen, if you could afford to build one, to keep the heat from the cook stove outside. Since there was no air conditioning, they wanted to keep their house as cool as possible. And is there a garden attached? Or part of the Yep. Uh, the, the kitchen garden, where we grow our vegetables, uh, is just beyond the summer kitchen. The idea being you bring your, your uh, vegetables into the summer kitchen, process them, clean them up, and then they go into the house for storage. So you do all your messy jobs in the summer kitchen. The other garden, of course, is the dooryard garden, and this is for the family to enjoy. Uh, and we have a team of master gardeners that keep it up for us. And probably one of the most unique flowers is the little spotted stem with the tiny leaves, kind of looks like an umbrella. That's a common name, the Stanley's wash tub. It is the largest flower, uh, flowering plant in the world. We're seeing the foliage here, but in April, early April, it'll shoot up a single stalk and uh, one bell flower and the stalk can be uh, four or five feet tall and the flower uh, can be a foot or two wide. Uh, people in the 1890s were fascinated with uh, the natural history and they loved to bring in exotic uh, things because they could. Transportation had increased, uh, you know, with railroads and, and uh, shipping. So bananas, oranges, uh, you know, luxuries like that were we're becoming more and more common. You mentioned an ice house. That's out behind the main house, is that correct? Yep. Ice house is built uh, just on the edge of the woods, so it stays in the shade. We fill the ice house uh, in January. We still cut ice and uh, stack it in there. The idea being this is a dairy farm, and they needed that ice to cool the milk. When you milk a cow, the milk comes out at over 100 degrees and will spoil quickly. And of course, you have to wait until the train comes to pick up your milk. So you stick it in a large tank, which the windmill continuously pumps in cold well water. 
When it gets too hot around this time of the year, you would throw in a couple blocks of ice to uh, keep it even cooler until the, it was ready to go to the train. And just, I guess that's north of the uh, ice house is the chicken coop. Uh, how many kinds of chickens are, are back there? We usually keep two varieties of chickens, uh, you know, one that's a good layer and one that's uh, good to eat. Um, and there were, of course, lots of theories on, on raising chickens, uh, whether you should have one or two or keep them separate. Uh, uh, but it's, it's just uh, safer to have a variety of breeds just in case uh, one stops laying at the part of the year or you won't run out of eggs. So. And then there are two large barn structures. Uh, what's the one on the one little south of the other one? Could you distinguish those two structures? For sure. Us? Um, the, the reproduction barn is our wagon shed where we use a loft to store equipment, uh, harness, uh, things like that. And then down below we have to maintain all the equipment. So it stores all the equipment. Uh, where the other barn is for the animals. The animals are down in the basement level. And it's, uh, you know, two levels plus the loft. And in the upper levels we store all the food. You know, the oats that we're threshing today. Uh, the corn that we'll pick later in October. And so all summer long you fill that barn up with hay and grain and then all winter long you drop it down to the animals that are down below. A little ways north of the garden, as I recall from the map, is the, uh, the orchard and the apiary. Can you tell us about those? Sure. Uh, it was common for a family to have uh, an orchard of 80 to 100 trees. Uh, our orchard is half apple trees and the majority of those apple trees would be used or the apples would be used to make cider which you could turn into vinegar uh, and that's what you use for a lot of your canning and putting up your vegetables. Um, the apiary in the middle uh, is of course our beekeeping area where we uh, have bees to produce honey and also help pollinate the, the garden and the orchard. And then there are acreages off to the north and then also east of where we are. Could you Kind of summarize uh, how much, what kind of crops are, are planted uh, today, and, and about how many acres of, of each one, maybe. Sure, we have about 33 acres in cultivation. Uh, we we rotate uh, now between corn, soybeans, and oats. Uh, we use all of the oats here at the farm to feed the livestock. We use a good portion of the corn, and of course the beans we sell um, to help support the activities. Uh, Soybeans were grown in the 1890s, but not as much as today. We didn't uh, really know what to do with them back then. They were mostly a forage. Um, they probably would have added other crops into their rotation, but uh, as we try to do as much as we can with the horses, and we only have two large draft horses, um, we can only manage to cultivate about seven acres. Uh, the rest we have a, a modern combine come in and and help uh, plant and uh, combine harvests and uh, markets the crops for us. So the horses participate in planting and cultivating as well as harvest and threshing for the case of oats as well? Yep, yep. The, uh, the horses earn their, earn their dinner. They're out. Uh, we start plowing in March. Uh, we'll, we'll even start plowing this fall. And uh, we'll plow disc and harrow with the horses. Uh, we do all of the oat ground and, and some of the corn. We plant all the oats with our horses, and uh, we plant you know, a couple, at least a half an acre with the with the horses of corn. And uh, then we also have uh, an old binder. We can bind uh, grain with one binder and, and corn with the other, and the horses will pull those also. The horses are pretty large. What, what, what breed of horses are they? They're Percheron draft horses, so they're you know, they're a good size to pull the equipment, but Believe it or not, there for our grain binder, we probably should have three horses. Uh, so um, even as large as they are, they can't pull everything. Well, the farm you have uh, draft horses, chickens. What other kinds of animals are on the farm? We also raise uh, cattle and sheep. We have Shorthorn, which was a good dual-purpose breed in the 1890s. So you could use them for milk or meat. And then we have Angus. Um, and if we look at records, uh, you know, this was a, a big dairy area, but there were also a lot of beef cattle running around DuPage County. And you mentioned sheep as yep. well. We have South Down sheep. Uh, again, it's a meat breed. Uh, with uh, the price of wool these days, it, uh, uh, we picked 
a meat breed as uh, one that we could actually make some income off of to help support the farm. Both uh, wool and meat breeds would have been appropriate for the area. I noticed that you had some, some wool in, in the uh, gift shop. Are those from, from your sheep here on the farm? Yep. Even though they are a meat breed, uh, we still can spin the wool. It's a little short, but uh, we, we have uh, cleaned and, and spun some, or we, we sent a way to have some cleaned and spun so that people can uh, knit with the wool from sheep that they can actually meet and uh, discuss the quality with. Great. Is there some other aspect of the farm that I neglected to ask you about? You know there's a creek that runs through the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, this is called Klein Creek Farm and uh, the creek is Klein Creek but they're spelled differently. Uh, the family, uh, being here since 1835, had quite a bit of influence here and there. And the son of Casper Klein, John Klein, became sheriff and he changed the spelling of his name so that it would sound more German since this was a heavily German populated area. He was elected to two terms county sheriff and so the creek is named after John Klein which is spelled different than his father Casper Klein. The other important part of Klein Creek Farm is that we're open to the public uh, and people can come and not only see what was going on or what it might have been going on but they are encouraged to help. Uh, our kitchen garden is planted by school kids in the spring and then harvested in the fall. Uh, right now our, our threshing, uh, we've been binding and uh, shocking and reshocking oats and the public has helped us a great deal with that. When we start picking corn, uh, the public will pick uh, the majority of our corn and this year we should have um, almost three acres to pick. And could you tell us about your, your uh, gift shop and visitor center? Sure, as you come to the farm, you'll see the, uh, uh, the Timber Ridge Visitor Center. It's an award-winning building. Uh, it's part of the Forest Preserve's uh, you know, uh, accommodations for people that come out to see us. Uh, we have a gift shop where we sell uh, things that you can further your experience. So we have books on um, the history, the activities that we're doing. We have books on crafts like knitting and tatting, um, as well as uh, sarsaparilla, uh, get an old drink. So it's, it's a way for people to continue learning as they, as they go home. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Thank you.